Hi. Um, I wanted to talk about a concept that's kind of come up for me today that's pretty crazy and kind of fascinating, and that's even though we both have both of these characters inside of us, I think that we often are either more of an asker as people or more of a teller. Asking. What do I mean by that? Inquiring. Asking. As I meditate, I notice so many things come up. And if I don't meditate, sometimes the things can come up and I'll feel I better react to that. It's a circumstance coming up and I better do something about it. But if I stay in meditation, it can come up and I ask deeper things like, is this true? Is this really what I want? Is this me? And then it passes. And as an asker, to me, there's nothing more amazing than having conversations with other askers. So for instance, even though I'm the CEO of my company, I think I'm mainly more of an asker than a teller. Like I've never said to Dan and Carrie, we need to do something this way. Dan and Carrie are my coworkers and they're amazing. And when I have something come up, it's a thought, it's an idea, it's a possibility. And I will go to Dan and Carrie and say, what do you guys think about this? And they will have a second to be able to feel it. And the second they feel it, they could either respond with, yeah, that sounds really good, and then respond to me with, do you think we should do it or do you want to start? And all of a sudden, we ask our way all the way until a new project, a new idea is made. And we don't move forward till we can feel that every person in that situation feels felt and on board. Sometimes it can be really easy to be more of a teller. We got to do it this way. We need to do this. And when you do that, you're moving more as a response to your circumstances than making space to realize that you are the circumstance and life will mold around you. And you're moving away from the opportunity to inquire deeper about if this is really the highest you, is this what you want? And sometimes when I end up around someone who's a teller, it can be hard for me (laughs) because a teller will say to me, we need to do something this way. And I immediately feel cut off from my asker and sometimes I don't even know it. That's my fault sometimes. And then I will respond as a teller. I'll be like, no. And I have to undo that teller and go, no, I don't want to do it that way. And all of a sudden the conversation doesn't work the same way. And I have so many people that apply for flow group or come to me at events or that write me online and I can feel the teller And sometimes people come up to an event, for instance, and go, I have to give you my gift right now. And they're not saying, would you like to get my gift right now? Like they'll chant for me or put their hand over my heart and I'm on my way to go pee or something like that. And I feel unseen because they told me that they have to give me my gift. Even if it's giving, they aren't giving me the opportunity to say no. Often tellers are scared of a no. They're scared to hear that they did it wrong, or they're scared to hear that that might not be okay. And sometimes I'll have one, one time I had an email from someone and it said something like, they were like marketing people and they said, we can help you make way more money at your events. We could help you get like 50 to 100 more people at your meditation retreat at $10,000 a pop. And I don't respond. And I'll get another email from someone like that that says, did you hear us? We said, we, and I'm thinking, did you even ask me if that's what I want? What makes you think I want that? Just because the world all wants just a bunch of money doesn't mean that's everyone's highest calling. You know, so when you move yourself to a place of inquiry about everything that comes up, every emotion that comes up, everything you believe, and you go past it, even alone, you start to be an asker even alone and you move from what do I want in this world to what does life want from me what does life want me to do and you humble yourself and you open your heart and you learn what life wants you to do and then you make one step and then you hear life wants you to do another thing and you make another step and you actually start to hear the step by step it'll say go take a nap you know go create this thing go do something fun go back home rest, right? I'll tell you the step after it. And when you're in the asker, you hear step by step from life. It won't tell you two or three steps ahead. It'll tell you the next step. 
But when you're a teller, you're often in a place of, we got to fix this, we got to do this, because you might be in your head about multiple steps that are way ahead when right now life is trying to get this one thing from you or co-create with you in this way. So it's just a suggestion, but if you really want to open your heart up, move to being an asker and try hanging out with other askers, with other askers. Because often when an asker moves ahead with a teller, that can create a codependent relationship where one is codependent. What do you think I should do? And they're just answering your whole life because you're opening a possibility, but they're not hearing you exist. So they become tellers only and you don't get to actually see yourself. And when an asker moves with another asker, which is what a psychiatrist is, is that what you want? Is that how you're feeling? How are you feeling? They're interested in how you feel. Then your whole life changes. Become an asker. It's amazing.